Hello everyone and welcome back to another Engineering Statics lecture video. I hope you guys are all doing well and are ready to learn, so let's get started. So the first thing that we are going to discuss is the concept of force equilibrium. So this is something I'm going to introduce to you guys now and it's something we are going to evolve later on and discuss many different aspects of. So in the past videos we mainly focused on determining vector components and then with those components we determined resultant vectors for both 2D and 3D scenarios. But again, we never really discussed what we can do with this or what are the implications of this. So a common example is be, let's say that we have a nice steamed bun or a bow in two dimensions, so it's in the XY plane. And in week one and two, all we would do is we'd say that this is experiencing a number of forces and we would figure out the resultant force based on those three forces. And we kind of just left it at that. We said the resultant force is this, I'm happy, I got my marks, I'm good to go. But we never really said what this resultant force does. Well, if an object has a non-zero resultant force on it, it's going to start to move. So what's going to happen is this bow, if it has a non-zero resultant force, it's actually going to start to move in the direction of that resultant force. Now the key here is it actually will start to accelerate. So it's not going to move with a constant velocity, it's actually going to start accelerating in that direction. So this brings us to the idea of equilibrium. Now, a particle is in equilibrium if one of two things. First, the particle is in originally at rest and remains at rest, or the particle is moving in a straight line with a constant velocity and remains moving in a straight line with a constant velocity. Now, the constant velocity, you guys are thinking, okay, yeah, that makes sense. If it's constant, it's not accelerating. But why a straight line? Well, something is moving in a straight line, the only way it would change direction is if I put some forces on it. So if we put some forces on it, things are going to start accelerating. We don't want that. Now for this particular course, we're going to be focused on the first one, which is a particle is originally at rest and remains at rest, which is called the static case. And this makes sense. If we look at the video's description, I call this course engineering statics because we're always dealing with things that are at rest. But what does this imply if things are static? Well, Newton's second law of motion states that an object is at rest, or static, if the acceleration is equal to zero. What does this mean? Well, the net force on the object must actually be equal to zero. Because we know that a force is equal to mass times acceleration, and if the acceleration is zero, well, therefore, the resultant force on these objects must be equal to zero. And that's going to be kind of the main piece of information we are going to use for the rest of this course. Because before we had all of our vector components and we wanted the resultant force. Moving forward, we're saying we want things to be static, so that resultant force, that actually must be equal to zero. This means that I can start solving backwards for those vector components. And we're going to talk about that later on. So yeah, that's it for this video. I want to thank you guys so much for listening. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video.